Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Fonda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician. And today I was going to talk about Bach flower remedies, specifically chicory and heather Bach flower remedies, um, as they can be used for cases where somebody is experiencing neediness. Before we get too far along, please note the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that persist or worsen, please consult with a qualified medical professional. It is always best to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. And while homeopathy or black flower remedies can be an effective therapy, they may not always be appropriate for everyone or as a single therapy, so please keep that in mind. Just a few words about Bach flower remedies generally, um, if you're new to them. Bach flower remedies are considered a kind of homeopathy, and homeopathy is a energy medicine. Um, so um, if you're interested in more history on either homeopathy or Bach flower remedies, I would look at the beginning of my um, first Bach flower um, remedy video um, on the walnut remedy. Um, I get into uh, the background history there. The general concept, though, um, with Bach flower remedies is that disease stems from an inner struggle. And I found that these remedies can be especially helpful with um, conditions that are mostly mental, emotional, or spiritual in nature. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of content, I have a uh, homeopathy and Bach flower remedy playlist. I'm pretty good at organizing my videos in the playlist so that they're easy to find, so you might check those out. But let's get into the two remedies. So there's some similarities, but there's actually a fairly di different presentation between the two. So let's get into it. So chicory is the first remedy. And so chicory symptoms, the key note um, with a, somebody who's in a chicory state um, is somebody who's going to be fairly overbearing <laughs> by the people around them. And sometimes this is um, also kind of described as like the needy mother. I, I think it's actually a broader, <clears throat> you know, kind of descriptor for various cases, but that may be the most sort of, I don't know, sort of stereotypical or cliched case, uh, you know. So at least you can kind of imagine that and extrapolate it out. But, um, the inner state of this person is that on a deep level they really don't feel loved um, and they um, feel rejected and so that's why the symptoms start to present in these people so how does it how does it look like when somebody shows up in a chicory state well what will that typically look like so somebody in a chicory state is usually pretty demanding of attention in various forms um, this can be somebody who might come across as domineering or demanding um, and they kind of hold court, <laughs> like they kind of become the center and they have their um, minions essentially around them um, so that there's always somebody around to provide a, an audience for them. And they tend to kind of get into a relationship with the dynamic of like owning them. Okay. <laughs> um, they can use all sorts of tricks, i.e. manipulation, to accomplish this. And so there might be something like tears, or threats, or flattery, or the eagerness to help, or criticism, or complaints. I mean, the list is pretty long as far as the techniques to accomplish this. But essentially what they're doing is they're going about all this to gain influence so that you owe them, right? And by owing them, like you're kind of beholden to them, and you have to cater to them on some level. Oh, they try to create this dynamic. So they tend to be fairly draining to be around. Um, you know, they can have their good moments for sure, but you know, um, when push comes to shove, you know, people might find them draining. You, these people, you know, there can be a variety or a range of, of, you know, mild kind of symptoms of this to fairly severe symptoms. Um, and people who who act like this, you know, they, they're kind of slang terms <laughs> for them. Somebody might call them an energy vampire or drama queen, or it could just generally be seen as like a fairly possessive parent or partner, um, that sort of thing. Um, and so the thing is what happens is because they act this way and they they're, have all these different techniques to ensure that 
they're always kind of at the center of attention. People will tend to tiptoe around them or avoid them altogether, um, um, or at least they want to avoid the guilt, the feelings of guilt or disappointment or even wrath, um, if that's part of how this person shows up. Um, but essentially what happens is that people around them won't give them an authentic response because they're too scared or angry or put off by this behavior. So some people will cater to them, some people will just walk away. Um, but in any case, you, this person doesn't tend to create dynamics and relationships that are healthy and balanced and reciprocal. You know, it's kind of like they're forcing people to like them or forcing people to owe them something so that again, they can always kind of call on people um, for some amount of attention, whether it's good or bad, unfortunately. Um, and again, this may be a result from being rejected or heavily criticized as a young person. So there might be deep roots to this. The other thing is that, um, y you know, if you're inter involved in psych psychology at all, you know, this can start to tip over into actually pretty deep pathology, including personality disorders. <clears throat> So, you know, be careful because I would never suggest giving somebody chicory um, for a personality disorder. Um, it might be part of a plan for somebody who has a personality disorder and there might be some um, benefit there. But the other thing about this sort of picture or kind of symptomology is that I would think that people who are in a chicory state might be so deep into it and so unaware that there's any other way to be um, or they're gaining too much from the way things are currently set up in their lives um, or at least they think there's too much benefit that they won't seek help. You know, they, they won't be knocking at your door like, oh, you know what, I, I've realized, <laughs> you know, I've developed this insight but I'm really kind of overbearing and I kind of just trick people into being part of my world and you know most people aren't going to be that forthcoming um, or own the responsibility of how they've created these um, relationships but it might be that there is a relationship that's meaningful enough to them that's actually pretty damaged because of the way they keep showing up in this way and they might have a, mo a motivation there if they're willing you know because it's it, it would be a heavy thing to accept responsibility for showing up in this way, you know. So, uh, but it, part of the reason why I even um, am bringing this up is that sometimes it's even helpful to people around the chicory person to identify the symptoms, you know, and the, and the behavior um, so that the, perhaps they can make better choices, even if the chicory person themselves is not in a state or, you know, has the wherewithal to seek change or help, um, at least the people around them um, can potentially benefit. So that's why I'm talking about it today. Um, um, so the risk of somebody who's in a chicory state who doesn't get help is that, you know, they're basically gonna chase away what they're actually looking for, what they actually want. You know, they're looking for attention and affection and stuff like that, but, you know, again, people are not going to offer it freely because they're gonna, you know, feel smothered or um, like they have to do something. It's not gonna come from the heart. <clears throat> so, you know, it's gonna feel, even if they get something from somebody else, it's gonna feel pretty empty. <clears throat> the other thing is that, you know, it's a, by acting in this way, <clears throat> excuse me, People essentially are trying to fill themselves up with things that are outside of themselves. And the thing about that is that whenever we do attach to the outside world or exter external world, the external world is subject to flux and flow and change, you know, second to second, minute to minute. So that's not a very stable base um, in which to develop um, or create some sort of structure that you think is going to give you the attention that you're looking for, even if it's a subconscious wish. Um, and so it's, it's, at some point, you know, it's, it's probably going to blow up. <laughs> um, maybe not, but it's still going to feel empty if it doesn't blow up. So, um, and the thing is, is that, you know, even if people maintain this somehow, um, 
they're these folks are never going to really learn how to love themselves they're never going to learn how to fill that deep well within themselves by themselves they're going to keep kind of trying to um snatch you know energy and affection attention from other people and again it's going to just be forced affection it's not not going to be true at its um, core and people feel that difference um they may not always acknowledge it but they'll feel it um so the potential outcome of taking a remedy like this is that somebody actually develops self-love um, and they end up not just sort of taking from people and not, but they, they can learn how to give selflessly to others without condition, um, rather than giving with strings attached. Yeah. Because again, the strings are, it's like, okay, so whenever I need it, I can reel you back in, <laughs> you know, to fill my, you know, um, this deep black hole within my heart. Um, and they can become like a fountain of love for others and develop more warmth and sincerity and create freedom and space for other people to show up as is true and authentic to them. So that tends to be a healthier basis for relationships and relationship dynamics. So this is chicory. The second remedy I wanted to bring up is called heather. And this is a slightly different, well, it's pretty different actually, not just slightly different, but it's pretty different in terms of the way that a heather person, a person in a heather state will show up. Um, this person tends to be fairly self-absorbed and so sometimes, and I don't always agree with it, um, but sometimes people call this the needy child remedy. I'm not sure I agree with that, but you might hear that terminology in other places. Um, and the inner state of this person is more on the basis of like a state of neglect, loneliness, confusion. Um, and so, what the way it may show up is that this type of person might if they're more of an extroverted type they may talk compulsively and whenever they talk to somebody like they might go on and on and on and the topic always comes back to themselves <laughs> so it might be difficult to end conversations with this kind of person in this kind of state um this you know heather people um they might be the kind of person who just, you know, randomly tells a stranger, you know, their whole life story, <laughs> you know, like somehow they have this compulsion to like talk and because part of it is like, you know, they might be confused or they might be processing um, because they haven't been mirrored or validated in the past. And so on some level, that's really what they're looking for, although they may not be aware of it. And then again, this might be the kind of person who needs an audience, not in the same way as Chicory. I mean, Chicory is going to like maneuver and calculate, <laughs> you know, to make sure, you know, people are always in debt to them. The Heather person might be much more sort of um, benign um, or even innocent or childlike in nature. Um, but it's still going to be a drain around people, you know, and the relationships that they create are not going to be reciprocal and balanced. So that's still going to be a problematic in the end. Um, I could see in this type of situation, it just may be that like, you know, people roll their eyes like, oh, you know, this phone call is going to last two hours. <laughs> or, something like that. or they might not like they might keep their distance a bit. I don't know if they would walk away completely, but they may not. They may kind of. Um, measure out how much time they have to give to a Heather person because they just know that, you know, it's going to go on and on. And, you know, there's not, it's, it's not really going to come back to them. Um, so, but I don't, I, I don't think in this case they would necessarily potentially blow up and be as dramatic and traumatic as, um, potentially somebody in the chicory state, but you never know. Um, so, you know, again, the topics of conversation with a Heather person is it's, it's going to be about them, issues, problems they're facing, that sort of thing. They don't have a tendency to really inquire about others. So if there's a conversation like 80, 90 percent of the time, it's about them. Um, and even if they're in a conversation, you may get the sense that they're not fully present because, again, they're absorbed in their own problems like it just really takes up their own bandwidth their own attention and so again they may not be present or fully attentive to others and again there can be extrovert introverted types 
So even introvert who may not talk, you know, may not be the compulsive talker, whenever they do say something, or even the way they organize their lives, it's really about just, um, you know, managing their own needs um, rather than really considering the needs of others. Um, not in like a malicious way, but it's just, that's where their energy goes. And this can be a temporary or chronic situation. So somebody in a chronic state, you know, you might kind of think of those people as like, oh, that's just the way they are. <laughs> you know, and they kind of have a reputation for being, um, showing up in this way. But it might also be a temporary situation where, um, you know, they might be going through some big life change or developmental phase. And the reason why they have this need to talk and, and they are self-absorbed is because they truly do need some place to like process what they're going through. And because especially when people go through a big life change or developmental phase, you know, they're coming in contact and with different parts of themselves that they may not have known existed before and they're trying to integrate them into perhaps new situations. So there's, you know, there's a lot, it's stressful. And so, you know, some people temporarily might just need to process, but it's not like they're, you know, day in, day out, you know, motivation. Um, and, you know, from like a longer term, like why does this even occur um, type perspective, it may be that these, these folks were more neglected rather than like outwardly rejected or criticized perhaps like the um, chicory folks, the other people might have just been like, you know, even benignly neglected. And so they didn't get any sort of witnessing or validation as, as a kid. And so they have a hard time knowing how to do that for themselves. And so they, they're like, I was sort of, you know, again, naively or, you know, again, it, it's not malicious typically, but they just, um, they may not even realize that um, the, this is what's going on and this is why they're driving people away. So the risk is similar in some ways to the chicory state where essentially they may be sort of not exactly chasing people away. That's more chicory people might be chasing people away, but these folks might just be sort of, um, you know, pushing people away, um, a bit because again, if they're always kind of thinking about themselves and talking about themselves and what they're experiencing, um, most people are, are going to get tired of that at some point or have a limited, limited, uh, tolerance of that. Um, and they're also, because they're so within themselves and wrapped up in themselves and their own thoughts, worries, experiences or whatever, they're going to limit themselves. Um, because in a way they seem like they're present because they're talking with people, but it's more like they're talking at people. And there's not really um, an equal exchange and so they're gonna kind of stay wrapped up in this little bubble that they've created and they're gonna have a hard time getting out of themselves and getting out of that circle you know that cycle for themselves um, and again they tend to end up in imbalanced relationships um, the potential outcome if somebody takes this remedy if them if they're in the Heather state is that they can develop true empathy for others and become a great listener. It opens up their worlds and brings in more reciprocal and deeper relationships potentially. So that's the second remedy for neediness. Again, um, when somebody shows up um, as either a chicory or heathery, heather state, um, there's a pretty big distinction in terms of how they um, show up, even though the base level, they're not too dissimilar in terms of why they're showing up with symptoms like this. And the other person might actually have enough self-awareness and insight um, that at some point they might say, you know what, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, <laughs> but um, you know, I'd like my relationships to be better or different than they are. And so the other person might be more willing to seek um, things out because they're not necessarily doing it to control and manipulate people. It's just kind of a collateral damage, <laughs> you know, kind of a side effect of their internal struggle. So other remedies you might consider, um, uh, I have a few, you know, quite a few black flower remedies that I've done. So 
Aspen might be a remedy you might consider. Um, for somebody in the, if you're thinking about the Heather remedy, you might also consider Aspen. Because Aspen is really for people who are like super, you know, hypersensitive. And so any little thing um, is going to, you know, potentially imbalance them. And so they might need, they might be a person who also needs to process. So if you feel like there might be this issue of, you know, need to process, you might look at the Aspen remedy um, because it might be a matter of hypersensitivity, not necessarily that, you know, there's this deep neglect, you know. Um, that's kind of at the base of the symptomology. You might also look at the remedies, uh, the videos I did with Serato and Larch. Um, Serato is important for somebody who lacks self-trust and self-confidence, and so they're always looking outside of themselves for sort of advice and opinions because they don't trust their own intuition and their own judgment. So that may be why they're engaging people with a lot of talking. So again, this is more for the Heather remedy as an alternative potentially. And then there's the Larch remedy. Larch remedy is for people who feel inferior. And because they feel inferior, they don't ever really give themselves a chance to um, go for what they really want. So um, they they tend to be a little bit quiet about it, but again, it may be this, they may complain a bit because they're not really where they want to be, but they don't have the confidence in themselves enough to go for what they want, and so they might just kind of sit on the, on the side and, you know, kind of on the sidelines and, and complain. So again, maybe similar to, um, one of these remedies, but again, the the deeper underlying issues are different. Um, you might also look at the Buckler remedy video that I did on Walnut, um, because that's all about like new beginnings. And so again, whenever somebody goes through a new phase of their life, you know, it brings up a lot of stuff and they might need to process, especially if you're thinking about the Heather remedy and it seems like more of a temporary state, um, it might be that this person needs like Walnut um, as an alternative or in addition to. And then I did a whole video where I talked about several remedies um, um, about people feeling overwhelmed. So again, this is more like potential alternatives for somebody in more of the chick, um, not the chick state, the Heather state. Um, if again, it's more of a temporary, you know, feeling of being overwhelmed because of outside structures. So you might look at that video as well. So there you have it, a couple new Bach flower remedies to support, you know, really filling that, that hole within our own hearts. Um, you know, we're all needy to some extent or others, but when it really becomes a problem for people and it's really driving people deeper into an emotional hole, you know, that's when people might start showing up looking for remedies like this. And again, um, I've seen some pretty amazing results in using Buckflower Remedy. So again, there is a possibility, um, you know, especially when using other sorts of mental health modalities to help somebody not just sort of like, you know, um, suck the energy out of the room or out of a conversation, but you know, when they find that deeper healing is that they can become like a really warm, loving, caring, like just fountain of love for the people around them. Um, so in any case, um, a couple of new backfire remedies. I hope you found this helpful and interesting and until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.